Hi guys. In this video, we're going to cover dependent t-tests and their uh, effect sizes using our Moat app. So what we'll do is we'll look at three popular programs, JASP, SPSS, and SAS in their output, and how you would translate that output into our app to calculate the effect confidence interval of the effect sizes. Now there are several pages for dependent t, four to be precise, so we'll walk through each one of these one at a time to really explore how these things are calculated. So first up, dependent t averages. So dependent t averages is a little bit different than the more traditional uh, effect size for dependent t. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on code just to show you what the, the, the calculation is. So when this is calculated, it's going to be mean minus mean divided by the average standard deviation of each time point. And that's different than taking the differences between time points and calculating. So you're not actually going to see the t-test statistics um, because if all you have is the means and standard deviations, you cannot calculate t. Now here's the code to use in R if you're interested in doing this in R, with complete with an example. So you would need to enter each mean, a standard deviation, and n. In moat here though, what you can do is enter um, either the left side or the right side. So you have to enter something on each line, and then when you have two things on one line, it's one or the other. So you can enter standard deviation or you can enter standard error. If you enter any of these here on the right side, it will automatically overwrite the left side. Meaning if I enter four over here, it doesn't matter what you type in the standard deviation, it's gonna use the standard error option. So one thing in each line, and remember you can enter these if you need them. Okay, so let's look at some of this output here. So I'm gonna start with JASP. JASP is just another statistics program. It's a free uh, program that allows you to calculate uh, simple statistics. And what I've run is a paired samples t-test. One of the big things that you'll um, need to do for one of the other t-test options is um, there's a specific option to get this here. It's not part of the default. But I've also turned on the traditional Cohen's D so we can compare and contrast to what we're about to do because this is not the one we're calculating right now. So there are four different types um, of D for dependent T. Okay. But what I can do for this one is use my descriptives down here. So I'm really gonna be interested in these numbers here. And so I'm gonna start by typing in my means and standard deviations into MOAT. So I got 5571. Okay. Oops, got a little excited there. My second mean See if we can kind of put these two together here, but not get too small. All right, there we go. Uh, our second mean is four, four, two, nine. Standard deviation was 1.988 and 2.878. I do not need to enter standard error because I have standard deviation, so you don't have to do both. In here is only seven. I know it looks like there's seven for each one, but remember this is dependent T, so it's seven people total. And then here we can enter our alpha. Remember alpha is type one error, so this can be 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.10, 0 0.07. So this is where you would enter your um, significance level criterion. I'm gonna hit calculate. Calculate is gonna do stuff here on the summary page. And so the first thing it does is it tells you what, how to interpret this effect size. This is still of the D family, so it's interpreted as a standardized difference between two means. It's gonna give us the effect size here, um, which is 0.47 and the 95% confidence interval. If I change alpha to 0.01, that will actually change the confidence interval and the estimation for it. So this, this number here is estimated by what you've picked as your alpha. And so our confidence interval ranges from half a point uh, below one to 1.5 above uh, zero. And so what we've done here in the interpretation is talk about how the confidence interval does include zero. If our confidence interval didn't include zero, then it would say that your test might be different from zero. So the interpretation of the confidence interval is literally if it includes zero, it probably is zero. If it doesn't include zero, it might not be zero. And then you'll get these summary statistics 
So we'll get back our mean and standard deviation that we entered, but it will also tell you standard error and the confidence interval for that mean only, which will be very similar to the output that you see in JASP. So 0 0.75, 1.09 is what I have here and here. And so that's how I take my output from JASP, translate it over here. In the code section, it's going to show you the code. And then, like I said a little bit earlier, it's going to show you how we are actually calculating all of this in the background. So if you're using R and you want to learn how to um, put these directly into your script, these are the numbers you'd enter. So you have to translate at the moment, translate standard error yourself. The help tab is this video. Let's look at some other programs. So let's say instead of JASP, I'm actually using SAS. So I'm gonna make this just a little bigger because the output from SAS can be hard to read. Now from SAS, what I don't see is that I don't have each individual mean, right? So I have the mean difference score and the standard deviation, the difference score and the standard error. So if we were doing this in SAS, we might have to stop and calculate each means uh, numbers separately from the descriptives. So the, the dependent T output in SAS is not very helpful here. What we'd want to do instead is calculate each um, time points, uh, uh, individual statistics to go and calculate this, this type of coins D. So from the dependent T output, I can't calculate anything, but if I had the descriptives output, I could. Now, if I'm looking at SPSS, thankfully it does give us those. And I'm mainly interested in the information listed here. So I would type in these numbers, um, getting our before and after. N, remember, is only one N, so it's seven, not 14, it's only seven. Uh, I two standard deviations. And so I would type those all in here and get the same output that I found a minute ago. And so that's how I calculate uh, dependent T averages which is the page we're on from means. Okay. So why might someone use dependent T averages over the more traditional dependent T based on the difference scores? Well, the dependent T based on the average scores has the average standard deviation here on the bottom, uh, the average of the two standard deviations. We think that's probably a little less biased and therefore you won't get an inflated number, a number that maybe doesn't represent the population, then dependent T based on the difference scores. So the formula for the effect size when you think about the difference scores is mean minus mean divided by the standard deviation of the differences. That's calculated by taking the time one minus time two and calculating the standard deviation. That number tends to be smaller than the average of the standard deviations. And so we think that this number might be a little too upwardly biased and that will bias your answers for sample size planning. However, they're both valid ways to calculate effect size when using paired samples. So we've also got this one in here. On this one, all you really need to enter is mean differences and standard deviation of the difference scores. And if you wanted to do this in R, here's the way that you would calculate that using our dependent T differences formula. Now, if I go over and look at JASP, this is where all the action is going to happen. So there's an extra button you have to click to get these mean differences. And one thing I will tell you to be careful of is that this is the standard deviation, the standard error of the differences and not the standard deviation of the differences. And so we want to make sure that we enter that correctly. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to type in the mean. So it's 1.143. I'm going to skip standard deviation of the differences because that's not the number I have. I'm going to enter 0.8 as the standard error of the differences. And my sample size is still seven because I'm using dependent T, so seven. And I'm gonna enter 0.05 and hit calculate. The summary page is where all the action is. So it's gonna show you the um, same interpretation for what a mean differences effect size is. Our effect size here with the 95% confidence interval. If we come back, we can see that that is what JASP is doing. So they're doing the dependent T differences. Sometimes you'll see this listed as DZ because it's based on the more traditional Z formula. Uh, the averages is sometimes listed as DAV. So when you're doing dependent T, you really have to tell people which formula you're using because they give you different answers. So the effect size on the last one was 0.47. 
This is 0.54, so this is a little bit of evidence of the upward bias of D differences. It'll also show you the um, way to uh, represent your mean difference statistics in APA style. And the test statistic. So here's T with six degrees of freedom is 1.43. Our P value is 0.2, which is the same numbers that you've gotten over here. So you can kind of check and make sure you're doing this right. And then we'll also give you an interpretation of that um, p-value, and our p-value is greater than alpha, which is 0.5, so we would say this is not statistically significant. If I wanted to do this looking at SAS, we would look for similar numbers. So I'm going to make this bigger just so you can see. And that action is all right here. So I've got our sample size, this is our mean difference, and then our standard deviation of the differences. So you can actually enter the standard deviation instead of the standard error. If you use this one over here, it will automatically overwrite this one, but let's say we wanted 2.11, which is approximately what that was. All right, we'd hit calculate, and this is what we would see. And so even though we switched from doing standard error of the different score to standard deviation of the different score, we're gonna get the same results. You know, give or take a couple decimal places. So if I'm using SAS, I would use these numbers. I could have entered the standard error as well. I can check and make sure my T values match. Last but not least, let's look at SPSS. So in SPSS, we have all the options. So we can enter um, our mean and standard deviation. So the action is here, but we've also got the standard error of the mean. So we actually get all three of them presented. And so I can enter my mean and standard deviation or a mean and standard error of the mean and our sample size, which is seven. And that would give us the output. So from each one of those three, that's how you'd enter for DC or the effect size for with differences in the denominator here. There's even more options that we could do. So for example, we could calculate this directly from T. So let's say you're not looking at your output or um, you want a faster way to go than entering the means or you're looking at somebody else's work, we can actually calculate this directly from T. Now this is DZ, um, it does not match the averages, and that is represented here. So um, this statistic is calculated by taking T and multiplying by the square root of N, which is uh, takes out the N value out of the standard error of the differences. And then we have this one here, it's dependent T, dot diff dot t so i'm not sure we need to fix that little typo right there but this is actually the formula here so if i wanted to enter that one and i'm looking at my three different outputs let's go back to do jazz first to be consistent i would enter t so 1.429 so the action is right here so one point oops point four two nine i could enter six degrees of freedom and 0.05 calculate, click on summary, and then, then I would get the same numbers that we've been looking at this whole time. It, so calculating from means or from T when we're talking about DZ gives you the same results. That's not true for independent T, which we'll see when we look at our independent T tests. If I wanted to do that from SAS, I could, and this is where the action would be. So we would enter the numbers from here. And the last but not least, wrong way, I could enter the numbers from SPSS, and that's going to be from numbers over here. So we'd enter T in degrees of freedom and sample size, which is here. And that's how we get the effect size for uh, with the differences on the denominator, or DZ. The very last one that we can calculate from, from a sort of dependent measure design is sometimes called DRM, or dependency repeated measures, but you have to calculate this from the means. Now on this one, what the difference is, is it looks like a big crazy long formula, but what's really happening is it's accounting for the correlation between those levels. And so it takes out the effect of this correlation, tied correlated error by using participants more than once. And so our function for that is d.dependent t.rm for repeated measures. And the bad thing about this one is that in the main t-test output, 
Uh, the only one that will give me every number I need is SPSS. But if I wanted to do this in JASP, I could calculate the correlation between the levels. I would have to run that separately. So you can look at our correlation page um, to see how that would work. And SAS, I would have to do the same thing and run a correlation between my two levels. But I can show you SPSS's output and you'll get this, the, the basic idea here. So in SPSS, the magic is here. In JASP and SAS, you would have to run the correlation and then type in means, just like you were doing your means page, and then also enter that correlation. So let's go ahead and enter those. So we've got 5.74, 5 5.574, 4.428, 9 if I round up. I'd entered my first standard deviation and my second standard deviation. So, so far, this is very similar to dependent team means. So 1.99, 2.88. I can enter that or standard error, but you don't need to do both. Remember, it's this column or this column. And then here's the biggest difference between this page and the dependent T based only on averages, is I have to enter the R or the correlation. And that, in this example, is 0.678. Our sample size is still 7. Alpha is 0.05. Okay. You're going to get the same interpretation because we're still working on mean differences. And we're going to get a slightly different D. And so this D is a little less than the effect size that we've seen previously. So when we calculated D based on averages, or DAV, we got 0.47. We calculated D based on differences, or DZ, we got 0.54, and then now this one is 0.43. So I would say that DZ is the traditional effect size for a paired samples test, but we found two ways to correct for what we think is a bias by using that dependent, uh, that difference score on the bottom. And so D averages brought that down to 0.47, and then DP repeated measures based on, you know, accounting for the correlation, brought that down even more to 0.43. You won't get the t-test values for d averages or d repeated measures because the numbers that we're calculating in the background have, no, um, are not the t-test for the like hypothesis testing. So that's why they're not presented here for you. Is that we don't have a way to calculate them um, based on the numbers that you're entering because you have to have that standard deviation of the differences. So you don't see them because um, they're not appropriate for hypothesis testing. And that's what it also says over here on the code. The t-test is not given to you because we don't have the information to calculate it. But you would report it in the same way that you saw on the D differences page. So all together, that's four different ways that you can calculate um, a paired, paired statistic for effect size. Um, with recommendations to use the averages or the repeated measures if you have the numbers for it. If you don't, dependent t differences is also appropriate. Just be sure you tell people which one you're using.